Hey guys, and what is up? Ellington here. As you can see, we're starting this off with a little bit of action already. Some awesome archer fire. You can see that on the ground here below, we've got some Gallic Hunters that are trying to take out the Ballista here on the wall. But these Egyptian archers have... They anticipated this was going to happen, so they were ready and as you can see they are forcing the gallic hunters to run away taking heavy losses all right now let's get into the real stuff here as you can see they're continuing to fire here on the wall we've got egypt not only that we also have nabati and heavy archers here as well and the reason that they were prepared was nervii is on the battlefield nervii has one unit that is called the gallic hunter which is a gorilla deploy archer. Arverni has them as well, as does Massilia. And a lot of people like to set up before the battle, they like to deploy them preemptively in front of the artilleries of the defenses so that they can snipe out the artillery using flame shot. But most experienced defenders know that when you see Nervii or Arverni or even Massilia, they're probably gonna do this. So set up slingers, archers on the walls to counter that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and look at some army comps and players here. So for the attackers, we have got Nervii being commanded by Godfather and Godfather has already lost two archers. Syracuse here is being commanded by Billy Blazes and look at this, Galatia not being commanded by Billy Blazes, but being commanded by Legacy. And finally, Gete being commanded by Flo. Now for the defenders, we cannot see quite much of their armies, but uh, we do know we've got Nabatea being commanded by Posguin, Egypt being commanded by Cryoskeleton, Pontus being commanded by Gilgamesh, and finally, Seleucid being commanded by Royal Athenian. And look at this, Nabatea actually has some cav outside. What do we got? Uh, looks like just desert, uh, standard desert cavalry. So this is a, um, a an in-house game. Um, you can see the attackers actually have a couple units here, a couple mighty horse and some mercenary Italian cavalry. And look at this. It's a good thing they did Cappadocian cavalry coming over from Pontus. By the way, this kind of got off, you know, real quick. How's everybody doing today? I hope everybody's doing well. You know, I know you can't really respond right now, but you could definitely respond by going to the comment section and saying hello. Hey, eh? huh? Uh, you like that tie-in? I thought it was pretty good, too. I've been practicing all day. As you can see, back here, Seleucid has a... I think he's trying to be sneaky. Uh, it wasn't very sneaky. One... That's not a very good unit. I would not suggest bringing it. Camel Spears are just not very good. Um, and this one Cappadocian Cav is in for a world of hurt. You know, it's being it's being hit by four, well, three. Uh, the fourth unit is not going in, but he, so Mighty Horse and then two Italian Cav are gonna do a lot of damage there. That uh, Cappadocian Cav's probably not gonna survive that. And coming up from Galatia, we've got four units of Galatian Legionaries moving up their towers. Interesting that it's Galatian Legionaries. Typically, you have a, a cheaper unit going forward for this task right now because that artillery is going to be able to do some good damage against Galatian Legionaries. I mean, against anything, it's just the Galatian Legionaries, for how much they cost, you really don't want to be losing them, right? So usually you're gonna go up on these early towers with like glacian swords or something levy freeman maybe i'm curious as to if the attackers caught that seleucid camel spear or not we'll see here in a moment if they start moving uh their cav over that way that'll tell us whether or not they saw saw it but it was definitely visible because we are looking from the attacker's perspective if it was invisible the whole way, we would not have seen it. Yeah, see this, he's... He, and, like, honestly, I, if I was Nabatea, I think I'd even just, like... I, I don't think it's worth going after towers. I'd just shoot units here. Because, like, in reality, there's four towers. Killing one towers isn't really going to change much. 
So I would just go for kills, especially on Galatian Legionaries. Yeah, calves are not going over there, so I I guess maybe they didn't catch it. It's not a great unit anyways. And I'm curious, I wonder if they're just kind of like more worried about this. Three units of desert cav. Where's the Gete? Gete's archers are back here. Got some Syrians from Galatia, but I only see two. Where, oh, where is the, oh, there we go. So you got Syrians and then uh, some Celtic Slingers, some standard archers from Syracuse. And then like, obviously Nervi, I lost two Gallic Hunters earlier on, but should still have two over there somewhere. I don't know if he it looks like uh, looks like Nervi is going after troops here. As per usual, this is so. This settlement is Bertigala. If you guys have been watching the channel or playing Rome for a while, you should know Bertigala relatively well. It is a very very popular um, multiplayer map. Um, typically, the strat for this map is this corner right here. It gives you really, really good angular fire for your archers as the attackers. So typically uh, defenders have to defend back here. And what that does is it allows the attackers a pretty easy foothold onto this um, corner spot, which that tends to be the hardest part about, you know, barbarian maps is getting a foothold. You know, the only way you have in is either blowing down a wall with your artillery as you can see, there is some some uh, cab fight here. Got Noble Horse going up against the Desert Cab. Noble Horse should in, should win that easily. But look at this Seleucid using that as a chance to take uh, to shoot at the Noble Horse General for Galatia. I think the Desert Cavalry is already gone. From like Desert Cav, from my memory, is is not a very good unit, so it doesn't really surprise me. So yeah, they're already dead i guess but yeah so like that is the toughest part about barbarian settlements is you pretty much only have siege towers or blowing down a corner like this or you know whatever you're know, blowing down a, a part of the wall with your artillery and so sometimes the hardest part about to see a, a barbarian map is literally just getting your foot in the door so that is the nice thing about this map for attackers is it does typically give you an easy way onto this area because defenders tend to, to defend like there. But you can see Seleucid is not doing that. Seleucid actually has a lot of his units set up in that corner area. I don't actually, he doesn't have anything set up over there, but um, so that's interesting. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I don't think it'll go very well because of the corner or the uh, flanking archer fire, but it, we'll see. Glacian swords, Thorak, or a Glacian Royal Guard already up here? They've already lost 11 men to artillery as well. And then I think that was a jabby fire from the thorax here. That's a silver chevron thorax sword. What the hell are you doing, Billy Blazes? Uh, did you did you did you smoke a little something before this battle? I'm asking, and I expect a response, Billy Blazes. I know you watch. Cause I've been watching you. That ain't that cool. I'm a buckaroo, I wanna be like you. Anybody song? Come on. Rodney Atkins, hello, you know, you know. That's your, you know, video, video, you know, per video singing, and that's all you get. That just killed a lot of his Galatian Legionaries, ow. Oh, man, I, you know, I bet they wish they had artillery over here to shoot at that, man. That would be just yucky. Jeez, look at all these. Oh, my God. All the silver chevron thorax sword. Uh, I guess they do have a 46 melee attack now. Now, this is typically considered a no-go for a lot of players because it really is a death trap. You know, defenders can set up like this and then set up stuff behind it that just allows them to just throw jabbies at you all day as you get on the wall. And then you have this hill, 
which gives you just this disgusting vantage point over this area. And so to be honest with you, most players either do a delayed attack onto this spot or they just don't attack it at all because it's 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 a tough one. Nervi Eye is going to have a, especially Nervi Eye with so little armor, I'm actually really surprised they, they let, that the attackers let Nervi Eye go into this spot. You guys, I hope you guys are no, I try to be a little, which I've had people ask about like mic things. So I have a push to mute on my mouse for when I like take a drink or have to burp or yada, yada, yada. I can use my push to mute to um, basically cut off my mic for when that's going to happen. And some sometimes I just am not very good at using it and it I like cut myself off. So if I just did that, I apologize. I had to burp. But I figured like if anybody's like me, they don't like mouth noises like burping or chewing or crunching or slurping. I hate all of that. As anybody in the Discord knows, uh, if you want to get on Ellington's bad side and have him force you to use push a talk, that's how you do it. Every everybody who plays with me on the Discord is go is nodding their head right now, going, "Oh yeah, that yep." Now this is interesting right here. Sorry, off top or back on topic now. This is really interesting. Most defenders tend to defend that spot right there. These defenders are not. They're actually defending like this, which I find really interesting. You don't, I don't, hmm. I'm sure I've seen somebody do it before, but like, I, like I said, the most common defense is just right there. And I'm kind of curious as to why they're not. I would love to know if any of the defenders are watching right now, if you could go into the comment section, let me know. Let me know about like what your thought process was here. I'm curious. I'm not saying it's a good thing or a bad thing. I, I don't like, I just, like I said, most people tend to defend right there and you're not. So I just want to know why, like what, what, what was your reasoning? And why are uh, the green archers in here already in combat? 70 kills. Please tell me, Athens, that you're not out of ammo. Please tell me. Okay, these guys 127 kills. I can maybe see that. But we are barely into this battle. I'm concerned. And I think Nervi is realizing why you don't attack this area very often. Because this, it's bad. Look, look at this. All those naked bodies, those are all Nervii. Just saying. A pretty solid push coming in over here, though. Um, Galatia is actually just, man, he's just forcing his way into this breach and dragging along the shitty Thorax swords with him. You know, I guess they're not really that shitty considering they are Silver, she Silver Chevron. But... Glacian Legionaries are a better unit, let's be honest. They are a really, really good unit, and they're just kind of like, come on, guys, you can do it. Come on, Thorax Sword. Oh, yeah. And the Syracusean, you know, I don't know if that's how you say that, but the Syracusean Thorax Sword's like, yeah, we can get in. Follow the Glacians. Woohoo. Don't ask why I'm acting this way, okay? I just got home from work. It's It's been one of them days and I'm tired, and I'm here, and I get a little goofy when I'm tired, and so, deal with it. You don't like it? I don't know what to tell you. Please don't leave, though. I, I love having you here, though. <laughs> Maybe I'll get that guy in the comment section, guys, like, dude, can you just shut the fuck up? I asked him, I was like, but wouldn't that defeat the purpose of the video? He never responded. It was kind of sad. Like, if you're watching, can you comment again? I would love to have that conversation with you. P.S. I love you. It's a great movie, by the way. Once again, like, I, I am stunned that these Egyptian archers apparently are out of ammo. And uh, uh, another thing is, they're about to lose this spot. That Pontic Sword is only a 54 men. 72 on this one. The Cretan archers trying to get some uh, get some shots over here, and maybe did Egypt just realize this and 
then now is fixing it, or are... Yeah, he just realized it. <laughs> oh, Egypt, don't... Oh. And now he's got to run away because his his line is falling apart. Oh, God, who's, who, is, who is Egypt? Oh, it's Cryo. So Cryo Skeleton is a relatively newer player. Uh, he's a good guy, I like him. These are all good, good, good guys in this battle. You know, bees isn't here, so it's fine. All of these guys are great. More Cretans over here. Got some Eastern Archers up here. Uh, so Thorough Spears. But man, I'll tell you what. The attackers have got a push here, man. And they are not really pushing very hard over here. You know, they, they use that that opening here to begin to push this side and just avoided this and like okay cool it seems to be going fine Egypt has come out and like is trying to contest this a little bit but but he only has two units so now I believe Galatia here looks like he's using formation attack should probably turn that off it should help a little bit but yeah, so like Egypt has a unit here and then a unit here, so he doesn't even have like a cohesive line at the moment. And what that's allowing the attackers to do is actually just really get around and surround these two units. So like, I guess if Egypt's gonna come out a contest here, he should send more, you know, he should send, should have sent more into this to contest this. Um, you know, it looks like he might be trying to send more now, but it's a little too late. He's already use, He's already losing this unit. Um, and this one is already engaged and flanked. So at this point, I, I almost wonder if you, you just are trying to get this unit out. I don't know what that was. His unit, I don't know if he misclicked something, but that thorax just went right through that Galatian sword. I don't think that was on purpose. This noble sword, um, 12 kills, 44 kills on the Galatian sword, or legionary, excuse me, 58 on noble sword. And then here we've got a levy throw spear going to get engaged by some Galatian legionaries. Get a couple of screenshots there. But yeah, man, this this is the push right here. I think this is the 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 money maker right here. Is just this push. This seems to be where they are putting their um, you know putting their main focus is right in this spot. As you can see, though, on the other side, there is a bit more focus being um, put onto this corner. Um, but it seems that their, like, primary push is going to be right through here. More and more units coming in. Once again, I think we've talked about it before, um, is that, you know, all of this ground that the attackers have now gained now it becomes to their advantage in being able to bring their troops into the settlement, which allows them to continue a more consistent, um, you know, more consistent attack. It allows them to reinforce those those uh, lines and things like that. When they are kind of choked off at the walls or choked off into small areas, it means that it's harder and harder for them to to bring reinforcements into the battle. You know, especially on a barbarian map, if they get trapped out here, they they can't bring things up as consistently because they have to bring them up siege towers. Siege towers are notoriously just kind of buggy and weird, so sometimes it's really hard to con to consistently have a flow of reinforcements up siege towers into the wall to to push an assault. But now that they have con they now that they have gained all of this ground on that outer wall. It is allowing them to bring in more reinforcements into the settlement, further allowing them to consistently keep up the pressure. And, you know, in the end, that that is really not what the defenders want. The defenders, in the end, a lot of times, want to smother the attackers. They want to keep them locked into a place because it's harder and harder to keep that a consistent push. Um, and obviously that varies, you know, um, Situation to situation, but that is typically how defenders want to play that. 
But unfortunately, this the, the attackers have done very, very well on keeping this assault going. This is bad. Oh, no, Egypt. No, Cryo, don't do it. Oh, his pikes went right into combat. They're exposed, getting Javis right into their flank, and now they're trying to get out of it. Oh, that hurts. So they just lost, what, uh, almost 30 men now from that. Oof. Uh, it's just a boo-boo. Um, and I think Pontus had a, uh, I think Pontus had a, uh, bronze shield pike in there that, uh, got annihilated by archers and javies. It actually looks like, do we have more of a fallback here? Nabatea is, at least. Maybe Nabatea is just trying to keep from being, uh, clumped up because of the artillery here. Nervier's artillery, 191 kills. Nice, and he's still shooting. Didn't get anything there. What did the other, I thought they, didn't they have another artillery? 116's not bad at all. And look at this, look at this. Galatia putting the pedal to the metal and pushing Seleucid back. He's got thorax swords against le legionaries but they're gonna have to keep falling back because another legionary gonna hit him in the flank there so i guess slug has to decide is he gonna hold this and this or is he just gonna get out of this i think he's leaving look at this a lot of units falling back it's actually a thorax sword all the way out here i know it's a hillman excuse me Couple get to a unit, heavy spears. I, maybe they're thinking about getting through the gate. Double sword, 187 kills, and then a more fresh one with 22. Glacier Legionaries, 161. 312. God. 221. Glacier Legionaries are nasty, man. 230, or that's a Glacian Sword, though. No, that's a Glacian Legionary. And then 230, God almighty. Then plenty of reinforcements. So I guess some of the Thoreau Spears are just going to set up square formations. I think they're just trying to buy some time. A Nabataean unit got exposed here. He pushed a little too far. And Gete was came in through behind with some uh, Falksmen. 220 kills on a Falksman, dude. Like, Falksmen have really good charge and everything, but man, they die if you sneeze on them. So getting 220 kills is uh, pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. It, had, it got double chevrons, too, so we actually got not just got kills, but actually got, you know... Um, worth it kills. Oh no. This is the, the hard part about this attack here. Is that right there, man? Four Eastern archers shooting right into the backs of these Galatian legionaries. They got their kills, but they are not going to get very many more. And then this hillman, I don't know where it came from. But yeah, you can see this side is just, it's gone. So Toluca just kind of bailing with whatever he's got left over here. Um, and probably just going to fall back to this spot. Nice spot by the Nabataean heavy archers getting some really nice back shots. And a Syrian heavy archer coming over from Toluca. They, they have not shot anything. There is quite a bit left here for the defenders, or at least that it looks like. Um, but I do not blame them for falling back. The attackers have been relentless in this assault. Even poor, poor Syracuse over here with his silver chef on thorax swords. Yes, yes, I am making fun of uh, your your unf unfortunate, I'm guessing, faction role, uh, Billy Blazes. <laughs> He's the god silver chevron thorax swords. <laughs> oh man, that just cracks me up. And then all he could bring is archers. That's just an unfortunate pick. I'm so sorry, Billy. 
And then, I, I, I don't think I agree with these thorough spears. They were kind of left here. Like, I, you know, I guess they were set there to buy time, but in reality, I think you just kind of lost men, you know? Uh, oh, the fierce swords. Oh, my God. Oh, archer fire and javies. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Nabatine Axe Warriors going in. They actually have a pretty solid charge bonus at 20. It's not terrible, especially if you throw on their uh, their uh, Frenzy Charge. But I don't believe he did. Got some more Legionaries and stuff breaking for Galatia. I mean, like, the Thorough Spears are holding in all right, but, like, I, I guess it's, it's okay, but... I think in reality, if the defender, if the attackers wanted to, they could smother this pretty quick. Now switching out, they took out good switch out Nabatia, taking out one Nabatia Axe Warrior and throwing in the other one. Once again, taking advantage of that Javi toss and taking advantage of that charge. Especially there we go. See that he used his frenzy charge, gives him a uh, what the hell. There you go, twenty five. Sorry. It was showing me a noble horse. I was like, uh, that, no. And then maybe another charge? Nope, he's gonna counter again. So taking the other Nabataean warrior, pull that one back. Probably a good idea. This one's very tired now. So this guy is fresh. So yeah, that was a good switch out. Good switch out there, Nabatia. It was Nabatia again. Nabatia was, oh, Pazguin. Yeah, there you go, Paz. Yeah, get you using, oh man, I'm proud. I'm proud. Then I thought maybe, is he gonna charge down? I think that's a, yeah, don't, that's a bad idea. Like regardless of frenzy charge or whatever, that those Galicia legionaries will uh, eat you alive. And looks like got a pretty sizable push this direction. Um, and I think they're just kind of chilling over here. I don't, I don't think they're gonna push that very much. Pont or, I mean, Syracuse still has his uh, at least one mercenary Italian cab. Did he lose the other one? He might have lost the other one. This one's got 100 kills. I kind of forgot about the camel spears, but I don't think the camel spears did much. We'll see at the end of the at the end of the battle what they ended up doing. I mean, the mighty horse are still around, 60 men and 64 men. So maybe the mercenary Italian cab took them on by themselves. All right, so the, uh, Ac the Abitine Axe Warriors actually did go into combat. They used their Frenzy char Charge, 65 kills. Now they're going to switch out again. Get a Frenzy Charge here. Doesn't look like it. The one thing here is that Nabatia is taking advantage of the slope for his charge. So nicely done. I think Galatia probably should have set up at the top of the, at the peak of this hill so that uh, these guys weren't getting the bonus off of the, um, de the decline. 65 kills and 48 kills. So they are getting some good kills here. But uh, Galatia Legionaries are probably going to start racking up. I'm not sure. Yeah, you could probably get some good kills this way. I wasn't sure if that, would, that, that those jabbies were actually worth it. Uh-oh. Hellenic Desert Cataphracts. Oh, going into Heavy Spears. But Heavy Spears do have counter cavalry tactics. So I don't know if that was worth it. I mean, they're getting some damn good kills. 73 kills. I don't know. I don't. Let's see. Yeah, that was all on this. Damn. Whoo. Oh, there was, there's nothing juicier than a than a really nice cav charge. Even elephants, like when they go into combat, it's kind of goofy. Like even when they go and they don't like do, they don't look that cool sometimes. But man, a good cav charge. Oh man, it is juicy to watch. And nicely done. navatia has got his heavy archers up here, able to shoot into the side. You could see, oh God. Now the cav cavalry counter ca tactics did allow the spears to get some kills on the heavy or the hellenic desert cataphract so that is a good thing that like it was at least able to deal some damage 12 kills on it but 77 77 kills on the cav 41 on the uh 
Nabati and Noble Cav. And I think the Hellenic, Cataf Hellenic Desert Cataphracts are getting ready to go again. And I think they will do well because look at this. The, uh, the spear line is pretty weak, but... Oh, yeah. Nice charge. You can see that their target was technically up here, but because of the way they were spread out, it kind of hit in a couple places. Now, the downside is that they, uh, Syracuse here had some Thorax Swords set up, and they were able to get some jabbies into them. Um, and so they have lost uh, 26 men now. The Noble Cav might try to go in now. But, I mean, they can do some damage here between the two, just cycling in and out the two cavalry units. I think your Hellenic Cataphracts, if they at least get 200 kills, I think you're happy. Oh, we caught him out of formation! That is exactly what you want, man. Oh my god, look at it! 177, oh, but the javi toss, oh, it hurts. Oh, the heavy spears were caught changing their lines. They were moving to a different position, and the Hellenic Desert Cataphracts caught them perfectly. 180 kills now. Oh, and this is good get this and then oh maybe he took him away no he didn't so he could sandwich oh nope because here comes the mighty horse sorry I, there's probably stuff happening over here but uh no there's not really so there's one glacial legion here that's gone in but that's fine because this is far more entertaining over here thorough spears set up to support mighty horse taking on the nabataean gen i think the nabataean gen got caught um but that's okay because it is a melee cav So the Nabti and Noble Calf should win that. Now he is getting double teamed. That is two Mighty Horse there. And Mighty Horse is a good unit. Frenzy charge. Oh, but look at this. Look at this. Thorough Spears surrounding, getting in behind. Hellenic D Desert Cataphracts getting in again. But these are just Noble Swords. The Spears are gone. Hellenic Cataphracts, 206 kills. Like I said, I think you get over two, 225. I think you're happy with the, with the money spent on those guys. Noble Cav doing pretty well as, as well. 101 kills, lost 12 men. Thorough Spears taking on the Noble Swords. Noble Swords are going to win that, but not if the cavalry gets in behind them. But it looks like, I don't know what how this happened, but the Noble Sword looks like he's actually here while the Thorough Spear is here. And that's not good for them because that means that Seleucid's unit is in the cavalry's way. That means the cavalry can... There you go. There you go. Move the Thorough Spear. Nah, yes, perfect. But now we've got Dacing Heavy Bows supporting. He did go shield screen, but I'm not sure that he got into it quick enough. Uh, I mean, it, it did all right. Like the, like the Noble, he only got a, like probably seven kills. They're letting Cataphracts, I think, resting. They're very tired. Letting the Silver Shield Swords do their job in taking on the Thorax. Now they are falling back, though. But I think he should probably move them out because they are getting shot pretty hard here by the Thoros, or by the Archers. And that was not a great charge. He got tied up in his own men. That, that's, that's not, that was not... Oh, God. Yeah, I think this is going to be the end of the Cataphracts here. Back to the front, you've got Nervii Fear Swords going in on some Thorax Swords. And here, a more substantial push coming now. Syracuse units, Galatian units. Pontic Eastern Archers just shooting into them like hell. Galatian Swords coming in. I think he's trying to get around there. Nabatine Heavy Archers just going in. I think they're out of ammo. Thorough Spears from Syracuse actually got out of that combat. Zackers still have a substantial amount, man. They have a lot back there. But this push back here, I don't think it went very well for the attackers. I, I, this, I think this hurt a lot. I think they lost quite a bit doing this. Noble Swords are still alive and kicking. Uh, cataphracts for Nabatea are gone. 
the noble general, noble cap general for um, Nabatea is still trying to get in and around. Getting a couple kills every time he goes in. Oh, these are the Falksmen. So I guess the noble swords turned around and the Falksmen came in. I think Falksmen get the same uh, bonus versus large that um, uh, the Thracian warriors do. Which, if I remember correctly, is 20. All right, Bronze Shield Pikes actually pushing forward. Pontic Swords going in and pinning some Galatian Legionaries. So these uh, Bronze Shields are actually engaging the Mercenary Axe Warriors. But here comes the masses of archers from the attackers. Lots of Syrians here. Um, and that Bronze Shield, uh, he's running away. He says, uh, fuck this, I'm out. By the way, guys, if you um, are part of the Discord, or even if you're not part of the Discord, tomorrow evening, um, Friday the 23rd, we will be watching the new Netflix series Barbarians, which is a series based on the Teutoburg Forest Massacre under the uh, reign of Emperor Augustus. And it is going to be premiering, or it's like coming out tomorrow evening. And we're gonna watch that on the Discord. It is a TVMA um, show, so the way we have it set up on the Discord is that there is an NSFW chat that you have to join to get a role to be able to watch the show. Um, so basically when you go into the NSFW chat, it asks if you're 18, you confirm yes or no, yada yada yada, you get the role and you can watch the show with us. But we do invite any of those that are um, of able able to watch and of age to watch with us we we would love to have you guys it, we're super 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 excited about it it's a Rome show um, and yeah so like I said if you guys would like to join us make sure to get in there um, and make sure to join the discord if you're not already part of the discord so the discord link is in the description Pontic Swords, Mercenary Axe Swords, just still archers, man. 141, 154, 156, uh, 225, just God, it's nasty. Both sides, just archer play has just been relentless. More units from Seleucan moving forward. Thorax Swords, some Nabataean Axe Warriors, Thorax Pikes, Nabataean Thorax Pikes specifically, that don't have their pikes out. Posquin, am I going to have to call you out again just like I did in the last video? Am I? Yeah, I know you're watching because you're a Patreon member. So you're going to see this before anybody else will. And you're going to know that I'm calling you out. You got a unit in here without his pikes out, man. What are you doing? He's gonna get in the voice chat later and he's like, you asshole, shut up. Noble Swords, 142 on those guys, nicely done. I don't think that unit was fully, oh wait, that's, yeah, that's a Syracuse. So getting through and actually starting to hit the back lines. God, look at the fire. Like, geez, like I'm sitting here talking and all I hear is of arrows and it's actually really distracting i'm just gonna be honest with you but yeah like it's just uh 199 uh 235 156 i think this one might be out um yes that one's out um and 237 on this one pontus definitely got his worth out of his archers um, pikes and throw spears moving over here, I guess. 255 on Nab on the Nabati and heavy archers. Jeez, man. Then I, I guess Syracuse is sending both of his pikes over there. Pretty much unsupported. Interesting. I, I, I'm, I, I'm intrigued to see how that goes. I, I don't know. Like, um, it's just usually you don't see people send like pikes kind of out by themselves. 
because they're kind of easily outflankable, yada, yada, yada. Um, but they may not really have anything out that back there that can deal with them. So now over here, this is getting a little, uh, you know, this is getting a little thin here for the defenders. You got Oathsworn, uh, two units of Oathsworn. One's pretty hurt, but uh, 114 kills, 15 kills, so a pretty fresh unit. They're going to they're gonna wipe this Nabatine Axe Warrior very quickly. And this tiny little 38-man Pondic Sword ain't going to... Oh, no! Oh, Nabatine, you dirty, dirty man. Look at you. Scythe Chariots. And you spent a lot of money, dude. Oh, this could be. Oh, but the archers, they still have ammo. Let's see how this goes. 32 kills. This could be a backbreaker, man. You get a lot of kills here. This could be a rough, rough day. Got to keep moving. Come on. Move, 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 move. Go, go, go. Got to go. Got to go, got to go, got to go right now. Oh, it's no, no. He got, I think he got stuck. I, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but I think he got stuck up um, on something. And I don't think he was able to actually like push through, which is what you need to do with side chariots. So you, you got to keep them running. And if you can't do that, it just doesn't work. Someday, like one day I'm going to give you an idea on how I, um, how I do my recordings. I'm a hand talker. And so sometimes if you see me stop my camera movements while I'm talking, it's because I, I use a lot of like hand movements and hand gestures, which I don't need to for a recording because you can't see them. But I'm used to like public speaking and things like that where you need to have, you know, good gest gesturing and you need to use your hands to talk um, because it just is a good thing to do while you're talking in public speaking. But that means I do it all the time and it's pointless for recording because you can't see me. But that is why if I'm like talking about something, especially describing something and I stop moving the camera, it's because I took my hands off the mouse and the keyboard. <laughs> One day I'll just like do a little recording with my, with like cam up in the background or like in the corner so you can see what I'm doing because it, it's just a little goofy. Every time I do it, I'm like, God, why am I doing this? They can't see it. Thorax Sword, 61 kills. 201 on this one, really. Oh, look at that. He's only lost 50 men on that unit. It's nicely done on that. Thorough Spear holding up the line with the Nabataean Axe Warrior supporting him. But the Oathsworn, 165 kills and 121 kills. Now, this Oathsworn did take some damage from those chariots. Now, the Silver Shield Swords, it looks like some of the units that were back in the back have moved back to the front here um, but as you can see more and more stuff coming back here so Lucid has got thorough spears Syracuse I think his pikes are just being dumb and then his other pike is over here oh I don't know about this Billy going into this but man this calf coming around the side she'll be coming around the side yes he will He'll be coming around the side with he will. So I already made that joke. I'll, I'll, I won't do it again. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. This bike's got 74 kills. The other one, I okay, he's going to try and take the tower. It's not a bad idea. 21 kills on it. And it's more kind of depleted stuff from Galatia, stuff like that. And then some Thorough Spears. More stuff from Syracuse, pretty much. So uh, Salukid has two t uh, Silver Shield Swords, including his general. And I think they might be falling back. I think the defenders might be pulling this back towards the point here. And I think the biggest reason why is this right here. Because um, I think that's a, uh, that's a Falksman. So Oathsworn, you got another Oathsworn general, you got Noble Swords back here. So I think that they're just kind of running out of stuff to protect this. Thorax Pike set up behind it could protect it, um, but I think he's worried about the archers, which they do still have ammunition. Even though they also have a bazillion kills, just like the defender's archers. This has been the game of archers. Their archers on both sides have just been, oh my god, 215, 187. 
So looks like Gete's archer is probably the ones that still have ammo. And then probably this guy as well. 75 kills only. Oh, then the Celtic Slingers have, have barely shot a thing. You still have a Noble Sword from Gete, the Gen, and a Thorax Hoplite from Syracuse that, for some reason, I think he probably forgot it. I do it all the time. Oh, and look at this. So, you know, they are through here. They're through here. And, yeah, I think they are basically just going to kind of turtle up around the point, which is pretty much their last resort. A couple Thorax swords left. But, man, I'm going to say the defenders do not have much left. It's not looking great for them. Early on in this battle, the attackers were just pedal to the metal, go, 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 and they... They really, really were not giving the defenders any relief at all. Um, but then about halfway into this battle, you know, there was a, kind of a little bit of a lull, a little bit of an extra setup phase, and um, I think the attackers got, lost a little bit of their momentum. And towards this more recent period here, I think you've seen the attackers regain that momentum and um, put the pressure back on. At least the, uh, at least the, you know, attackers didn't go into this like Richard Hammond in a in a remake. If anybody gets that reference, props to you, and you that is your good person because um, Top Gear slash, um, oh my gosh, what's the 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 Amazon Prime version of it now? Uh, um, I can't even think of the name of it, but the. Top, British Top Gear, and then the, now they went to Amazon, and now they're um, on whatever that show is called. Um, but Richard Hammond, if you know who that is and what I mean by the Remac incidents, or is that how you say that? I think it's Remac. It's a car. But as you can see, I think this is just the... This is the, the, the final days of the, or the final, like, stand of the defenders here. You got the th Thorax Pikes, Silver Shield Swords, got some Thorax back here, but still have archers from the attackers, Syrian heavies that look like they still have ammo, um, some stuff kind of guarding the back. But here's Noble Swords and Oath Sworn. They're just going to take this uh, gate and then probably push right in. Well, it can't really. There's a pike there. But, yeah. yeah. To be honest with you guys, I... I I just don't see any hope here for the defenders. I think I'm probably going to start a fast forward here because I think this is going to be it. I think this is kind of their last gasp of air. The pikes, yeah, I mean, with the pikes breaking already, what is that? Is that probably from our, yeah, it's army losses, man. You already start seeing the units begin to break, and I think that's when you kind of, it's, that's it, that's it. All right, we'll finish it off here. Watch the final stand of the Silver Shield Swordsman. To be honest with you, I'm personally not a huge fan of Silver Shield Swordsman. I tend to prefer a uh, Royal Peltist. Yeah, you can see they're already breaking army losses. They're flanked pretty much all around. I don't even know what's allowing them to stay in the south this uh, one thorax sword but it's gonna get attacked by a noble horse 312 kills on that noble horse general all right oh my god okay so first off billy 1608 kills i think you forgot about your gen by the way um 137 on the pikes and then the thorax did all right pretty much all across the board getting silver chevron thorax <laughs> swords Oh, Godfather as an Irvi with 1,800 kills. Um, Osworn did pretty solid. His archers, <laughs> two of them did not do very well. 
And then his infantry kind of got beat to hell. Um, legacy, 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 legacy. 4,022 kills. Okay, guys. Let me, let me reiterate here. 4,022 kills. Okay. He had not a single infantry unit, like sword unit, got under 100 kills. Okay. All of his, well, okay, never, 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 scratch that. All of his Galatian legionaries got over 100 kills. And almost all of them got over 150. Okay. You know what? Actually, wait. You know, he only had two that didn't get over 200 kills. Whew. That's impressive. That is really, really good. And look at this guy here. That guy had 100 kills left in him. 312 on his, on his general. His archers did great. Man, just, oh. Flo is Gete with 2,084. A definitely respectable number. Archers did okay. His noble swords did pretty solid. And just uh, pretty good overall. 231 of Falks. Uh, cryo Skeleton. Once again, Cryo is a relatively newer player to the game. Um, and that's okay. You know, unfortunately, it looks like this battle just wasn't his fight. And and that's all right. It happens to everybody. We've all had one of these games. You know, um, Royal Athenian with Seleucid with 2,200 kills. Kind of all around did pretty solid. Most of his Thorax did pretty good. His, his Hillman pretty much died, but that's what they do. His Archers did very well. Um, Gilgamesh with 2,471 kills. So Pont is coming in with the best kills on the team. Um, all around, just solid. You know, 195, 172, 176. Archers just did fantastic. And finally, Posguin with 1,943 kills. I think here is, I guarantee you, to, he would say, I wish I did not bring these. All of this. The armor, I didn't even know he had armored, armored camel spearmen. I don't know where they were, but, um, yeah. So, uh, chariots, not great. Um, but that's all right. Chariots are high risk type thing. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Desert cab just isn't very good. Um, but his infantry did okay. His archers really just tore it up, man. That's most of his kills right there is right there. It's, you know, cataphracts did really well. Well, that is going to be it, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, this was a good one. I enjoyed it. This was, you know, I, I really enjoy doing these in-house battles. I love seeing all these names of guys who uh, come and play in the Discord all the time. It's, it's a lot of fun. But thank you guys so much for joining. We will see you guys next time.